as you see there, one performance level. All right, this is saying, in this case, gasoline engine oil categories, um, oils with an S there, particularly uh, under the gasoline S service category, okay? Two, viscosity grade. This is really how thick the oil is and how well it can easily it pours. Now, what's the significance of this? Well, really, it's important if you're, say, using an oil uh, in a very, very cold climate, um, it will get like treacle if the temperature is very low. Uh, whereas if you're using it in a climate such as the Philippines, and you use that same oil, then the chances are, in the temperatures we have here, it will get too thin, it will be like water. So that's what the viscosity rates are telling us, really, about the oil's suitability for the sort of place and the climate in which it's used. We move on to three, energy conserving. A lot more interest these days, even the oil manufacturers, who really are only interested in you buying vast quantities of oil, even they have to comply now with trying to produce oils. The environmental legislation is pushing them towards making more energy conscious oils, okay? Ones that are gonna conserve energy. Now, these are all things that, as producers of BMX, our core beliefs are in uh, not only producing a good business, not only selling our goods, but we are also environmentalists through and through. So wouldn't it be ideal if we can combine all these things, if we can give you higher performance, if we can make a, an oil that is suitable for a much wider range of, of use from cold countries through to hot, and also if we can give you a major, major saving in energy, then we've won in every direction. Okay, so to finish on the categorization of the oils, this is the category for diesels used in conjunction with the API CI4 and CJ4. Down the bottom we've got a little sign saying CI4 plus and this is to provide a higher level of protection, it says, against such related viscosity increase. Well, again, a lot of these things are things we've gone into in more detail in the technical training. The really important thing about this is that it has to do with how long your oil will last. Now, the oil companies, again, some sort of pressure from the public, some sort of pressure from the environmentalists, and some sort of pressure from legislation which is now coming in, they are making oils last longer than they used to. Okay? Because we are throwing away so many tons and tons of oil every year, just throw away as a complete waste. There is no need to do this. In fact, uh, it's, it's a slightly long, long story for today. But we have, uh, before now, produced engine oils that will last forever with no deterioration, uh, with, with the right sort of filtering systems, you never have to change it. Because oil never, this is something to remember, the oil in your engine itself, provided you keep it clean with filters, can go on and on, keep it topped up with a few additives, and keep going on forever. <coughs> so every time we throw it away, and I've seen cases in the Philippines, uh, where, you, you know, someone has come up with, with an old truck, that they've parked it on the, the edge of the road, they've undone the plug underneath, and they drain it into the water, into, into, your, into your sewage system, and that then gets into the water that we drink. So these are very, very important issues. Right? So we've actually come up with a system where using the DMX technology, it's something we'll introduce later, so, so not for today, but we've actually come up with a fill for life engine oil that outperforms all of the oils from the uh, major manufacturers. Right, so that is what that little bit of, of uh, categorization is about. Where it says CI4 plus, that means even the oil companies are recognizing the need to not throw away oil frequently. 
okay, even though they sell less of it for doing that. Right, let's look at how engine oils are made up. Basically, uh, the composition of an engine oil, and again, we'll try and keep this simple uh, for this our purposes of this afternoon, but you have any engine oil consists of what we call a base fluid or base oil, and that makes up the bulk of it. And then the bits that do the real work are in a little package of additives. Okay? So if we look in a little more detail, the base oil, 70 to 85% of what you buy is the base oil, okay? And that 15 to 25% is the uh, additive package. Now, when we move on to the DMX technology, we'll see that really the DMX will take over most of the functions of all your normal engine oil and will do a better job. The base oil, when we use DMX, is really then used just as something to carry the DMX around the engine, okay, in essence. So, we'll look at a bit further in detail at the base oil. What makes up a base oil? Well, base oils um, can be of various different types. Mineral oils mean largely the oils that come out of the ground as crude oil and then are processed relatively simply, okay, in a refinery, normally by distillation, okay. Uh, so that, that's the way that oil was produced for many, many years. Getting into the late 80s, early 90s, we started to get um, very much higher performance cars and trucks and engines, and the emissions laws were getting tighter and tighter, and we had to have engines that worked to a much higher standard. The tolerances in the engines were much tighter and closer, and so we needed better oils, and the oil companies responded with what they call synthetic oils, which are effectively, um, in, in origin, it, it may have come from petroleum in its, in its sort of core origin, but it's been processed so much by uh, industrial processing that effectively it's like a man-made product, which is why they call it synthetic oil. So the different synthetic oils, PO, PAO, polyalpyrolefin, hypercracked, and esters, well again, we won't dwell too much. Uh, just to say, you, you know, the, the mineral oils in theory are the older types, the synthetic oil in theory are the newer types, but there is a bit of crossover in between. Uh, okay. So this is what makes up most of the base of our oil. And we've got different categories here. Again, API, American Petroleum Institute, giving us uh, different sort of types so that we can recognize when we look at an engine oil by looking at the, the category it's in, what it's going to do, what it's made up of, okay? The only things of any real relevance here are group one oils, are the oldest mineral oils that, that you know were around from sort of the 1900s onwards, and they don't last very long. So, from the point of view of using, if you had a, a Group One oil, the oldest, you have to change it very, very often, which the oil companies may love, but uh, the environment doesn't. Okay. Um, as we go on through Group Two, Group Three, Group Four, and Group Five, it's it's almost a correlation with the quality going up and the life of the oil becoming longer, okay? So, those are the basic categories of base oils. Let's have a look at the additives. The function of the additive package. If you, you could use an oil with no additives in it whatsoever, all right? Uh, the chances are that you would put some pure mineral oil in your engine, you drive maybe for about a few hours, a few hundred kilometers, and even that soon, it will start to go wrong, okay? So clearly we need more life out of it. So what does the additive package do? Okay, it protects that base fluid, it protects that base oil. And how does it do it? How does it do it? Okay, well the first component of it 
it's an antioxidant. Um, if you think in terms of cooking fat um, that you use to make your food, if you leave it too long in the air, it goes rancid, it goes horrible. All right. Well, the same happens to, to oil, oil in an engine. So all that, none of these things, they're all quite understandable. But again, as I say, I'm just trying to give you a brief view today. Uh, if, if anyone gets very, very seriously interested, well, you, you know, we'll provide a, a longer answer and, and go into the full detail. Why, why do we do this, incidentally? The reason that we like to give you an idea of how all this works is because you're going to be going out selling to people and some of them will just maybe take your word for it or go to your friends or whatever and they will try it and they will probably like it, okay, just on your word alone. But a lot of people are going to sort of, uh, you know, want to ask some, some more detailed questions. Now, there are competing products out there, all right? If you go to uh, some sort of, uh, a, 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 I don't know what sort of stores you have here, but if it's one that deals in sort of products for making, making your car or truck go better, you'll probably see some things on the shelves that are oil additives, all right? So why, why are ours better? What, what makes this critical difference? Why does DMX actually work? And this is really what we're going to look at here. With DMX, we have managed to make one technology that takes the function of all of those nine things on the list there. DMX is not only an antioxidant, it's a metal deactivator, it's a dispersant, it's a detergent, it's an alkaline reserve, it's anti-corrosion, it's anti-wear, it's an extreme pressure agent. The only thing it isn't is anti-foam, which is, is something that, that the manufacturer put in there anyway. All right? Now, so I don't know if you've noticed, but sometimes in nature, you see the way nature likes to work is uh, it, it, it works with a great sort of elegance. And often you'll find that um, nature can make one sort of object do so many different things in a wonderful way. Well, this is part of what we found when we were working with DMX, is that we started off with one purpose, which was an environmental purpose. Let's make something that's not harmful as an oil additive. But we soon found when we were testing it, that um, it, you know, it was one of those lovely elegant solutions, and it actually performs about nine different functions at once. So let's just very briefly cover this, because again, in product training, we can go into this more. Antioxidant, like with your cooking fat, it just stops the oil going off as it gets old, okay? When, well, what's the problem with that, with an engine oil? The problem is that if we allow it to combine with air, it gets very, very thick, and it gets like treacle, and it doesn't go around your engine properly. I think that's the simplest way I can put it, okay? Metal deactivator, well, again, we're not going to go into detail, but just to say, that uh, all engines are full of lots of little bits of metal as they work and they again can form sludge in your oil which makes it go thick, it shortens its life. Dispersant, well, similar, um, similar sort of purpose in that if we're getting lots of little particles in the oil, we don't want them to all come together in big lumps. It's sort of, uh, almost I hope, sort of obvious to you that we want to keep the oil smooth so it can flow around, not full of sort of big particles that might jam and, and form blockages inside an engine. Detergent, well that is simply like your detergent you use at home. It simply means it's going to clean and it is very, very effective. In fact, so much so that you do have to take some care the first time you use this technology because it will do so much cleaning in all the insides of an engine that uh, we got a little protocol that we will discuss with you to make sure that that initial cleaning is done successfully. Uh, alkaline reserve, well again, uh, the, the simple answer is oil life. Why? Engines, when they run, make acid. 
It's just part of when you burn gasoline or when you burn diesel, you get part of the exhaust that you create has got acid in it. Now, acid, you can imagine, is not very nice stuff and it will eat away at the inside of an engine. It will also cause the engine oil to change and become thick. Right? So again, acid can start to make sludge inside your engine. So alkaline, and alkali is the opposite to an acid. So what we mean by alkaline reserve is how much alkali is there in our oil to stop that buildup of acid so that the oil will last longer. Right. Okay, so that's protecting the oil. To protect the machine, anti-corrosion, well, we don't want acids and we don't want water and things making our engine go rusty inside. Okay. Uh, Anti-wear agents, again, we don't want uh, the metal parts inside wearing too quickly. Extreme pressure agent. Now, this is the one thing I'd like you to remember. Your normal engine oil from Petron or whoever else, Caltech, whoever you buy from here, does not have any effective extreme pressure agent in it. All right? This is rather a, a bit of partly laziness on, on the part of the oil manufacturers. As I said before, as long as they sell you oil, they don't care much beyond that. It's also um, extreme pressure uh, wear, wear in engines. We're, we're going to go into this in a little detail in a minute. But extreme pressure causes wear in your engines. To some extent, the people that make your, your, your car, your truck, they're not so very worried as long as it lasts three years, five years, and the warranty's over. Um, if it then stops, they're very happy because you have to buy another one. Okay? So neither the manufacturers of, of your car nor the oil companies really too worried about putting extreme pressure agents in there. We are, and it's quite an important part of what we do. So we're going to spend a little while just discussing that. Okay? Right. Uh, the last one down there, you see anti-foam. Well, that's there in, in all engine oils. And all it does is it stops masses of foam building up inside an engine. Right. Principles of lubrication regime. Okay. If we're looking at trying to um, stop bits of metal in an engine wearing, we've got three different circumstances that can occur. One is called hydrodynamic, the other is called boundary, and the third is called extreme pressure. Well, let's have a bit of a look at this, because it's quite useful to understand. Really, this is by way of an explanation of why we're interested in extreme pressure, because this word is, is going to come up a lot in connection with DMX. And it's useful, it's not essential, but it's useful if you are able to discuss with someone that's interested in buying the product what we mean by extreme pressure technology. Okay. Right, hydrodynamic lubrication. What we see with a hydrodynamic lubrication regime is, imagine this is a, a piece of metal traveling in one direction, on top of a piece of metal traveling in the other direction, they're sliding over each other, and the best way, uh, you, you, you probably felt this uh, for yourself, if you have a liquid in between, it's much easier for it to slide. Uh, I mean, think of a wet tile floor. Uh, your foot is going to slide extremely easily and you may fall over, okay? And that is meaning that really what's happening is between your foot and the floor, we've got a layer of lubricant in between. So hydrodynamic, what that means is that there's a complete layer of oil in between two surfaces. A happily running engine should have that most of the time, okay? Right, so moving on from a hydrodynamic, what happens is, when we put a bit of more load on the engine, then we actually squeeze that oil film. And what you'll see 
is we can squeeze it so much that the metal is beginning to contact. We've still got a little bit of oil in there, but it's actually beginning to contact. This, this metal surface, you might think the inside of an engine are very, very smooth, but actually we're looking under a microscope here, and you'll see it's full, all the metal is full of little hills and valleys and imperfections, okay? Right, so, as it starts to contact, as the pressure on the engine increases, and the load, <coughs> we go from hydrodynamic to boundary lubrication. What is the problem? Well, where we actually get this contact between the little peaks here, it creates a lot of heat. It creates what we call a hot spot. All right? Again, we're looking through a microscope at this, but this is happening all over, all over and throughout your engine. And each hot spot produces so much heat that it actually cooks the oil just in that little area. So what is the problem when we cook the oil there on the hot spot? It's like you overheat your oil for cooking. It spoils it, all right? And that reduces the life of the oil. So if we can avoid those hot spots, not only does our engine not wear, we don't wear little bits of metal off at each hot spot, but we also keep that oil in a happier condition because we're not overheating the oil where that local area of heat occurs, all right? So, what's the next stage? We've gone from hydrodynamic, where the oil is all the way in between, through boundary, where we get hot spots, extreme pressure. When does this occur? Cold cranking when you're starting the engine first time in, the, in a cold morning. Heavy loads where you're having to really go up, up a very steep hill or you've got a lot of people or you're suddenly, suddenly accelerating. This forces parts of the engine hard together. And as you can probably imagine, if there's no oil in between, you're going to get a lot of heat, a lot of friction and a lot of wear, all right? So what can we do about it? Well, this is where DMX starts to come into its own. DMX is an extreme pressure lubricant. That's what it was designed to do, okay? So, how does it actually work? Look at the hills and valleys. This is like our, our pieces of metal that we had in the past earlier diagrams. There's the film of oil, the orange oil in the middle. But now, the hills and valleys have been filled up with what we call a driver chemical film. And that is the DMX actually working. And now, instead of having a lot of hills and valleys here, we have a pure, smooth surface, and a pure, smooth surface on the other piece of metal. Now, that is, again, back to a hydrodynamic situation where we got a nice layer of oil in between, but we got our tribochemical fill, the DMX is actually working on the metal there, so that, once it's there, if we need to move to push the metal together, extreme pressure situation again. Now, instead of being able to contact, we've got this layer, very, very microscopic layer of DMX that is actually stopping the metals contacting each other. So, this means no longer do we get any bits getting hot. It means we get much, much less friction in there. And I mean, the, re the results are actually dramatic. Uh, again, if we do a more technical orientation, we may be able to bring in some machinery and we can actually show you this happening in real life by showing bits of metal working against each other and showing just what happens and just how much the temperatures go down and the friction goes down. But again, we'll have to do that on another occasion. All right? So, Really, we've been going into 
what I hope hasn't been too difficult a, a, a technological explanation. It, it's difficult to give you enough, um, you know, w w without sort of overloading you. But basically, what does all this mean? What does DMX do for us? The results. Reduce vibration. Okay? If we make everything very, very smooth inside the engine, it's not going to vibrate as much. Why is vibration a problem? Well, you can imagine if things are shaking around, they tend to break. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Okay. Now, noise reduction. Again, if you reduce the vibration, uh, things are going to just run quieter. And again, um, all right, that may not be essential, but it's certainly a much nicer experience for the customer. All right. Friction reduction. This is where our extreme pressure technology is really scoring, because if we get rid of a significant amount of friction, here we get to the real things that are going to sell this. Fuel consumption reduction. If you take friction away and reduce it, it means that on the accelerator, on the gas pedal, if there's much less friction in your vehicle, for any given speed, you don't have to press quite as much. It means you're not putting quite as much fuel in. If you're not putting as much fuel in, obviously your fuel consumption is improving. Increased power. Okay. If you're getting less friction, then um, the one area where we really had some fun with this is in 2004, 2005. Um, we started working with some of the tricycle operators, and you know they got very, very small little motorcycles, and often uh, you, you know they'll be trying to get as many people in, as much luggage, uh, as many goods and things onto these tiny little motorcycles. Their power is, you know, they're struggling, struggling to get the thing moving. We started working with them with DMX technology, and uh, the, the results were quite dramatic on those little machines as to how much they, they, they were coming back, even after a mile or so, of, uh, a kilometer or two of, of trying the DMX, and they were saying, hey, this is great, this thing's really going. Uh, so to them, power was very, very important. Uh, I mean, you know, it may be crazy to try and carry sort of three extra people on, on a trike, but, uh, you know, if they're going to give it a go, uh, they want as much power as, the, as they can get. Okay, so increased power, this gets noticeable. Reduced emissions, reduced pollutants, all right? If, by reducing the friction, we're not pushing on the gas pedal as much, by definition, there isn't as much diesel or gasoline going in there, so there's not as much pollution coming out. That's that's a simple way of putting it. All right. There are other ways in which the DMX technology will significantly reduce the pollutions, and we'll briefly, briefly cover some of those. Lower operating temperature. Uh, Philippines. Uh, well, there's more than one benefit to that. Obviously, we're hot, a hot country here. Okay. So if your engine runs cooler, uh, the chances are it's going to run happier. It means everything works better. If your engine's cooler, your aircon works happier, okay? Uh, because th there's less heat in all the engine area, and the aircon can actually work more efficiently. There are all sorts of advantages uh, to keeping a lower operating temperature, but one of the main ones as well is if we don't heat the oil up too much, we can go longer before we throw it away, okay? Metal scouring reduction, well, what that means is if we're not rubbing metal against metal in the engine anymore, then the engine is just gonna last so much longer. And again, this is a dramatic result, okay? Right, okay, we'll, 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 show, we'll show that uh, that little film uh, to late today. It was a film we produced for the USA market uh, just as a little quick, quick advertising film showing some of the point points that we've been going into. But again, we will show that to you. All right. There you go. What we've done is we've covered, unfortunately, a little bit brief 
Um, trying to go into a lot of maybe quite difficult technolo technological detail, but uh, I hope you managed to get some of the clues there, which are that firstly it's a unique technology, secondly the extreme pressure is really what it's about, that's where it scores, reducing friction okay, in an engine, extending the life not only of the engine but the oil, and reducing the emissions, reducing fuel consumption, giving more power. Okay, we've managed to do so much more because once we realized the power of this technology, we've adapted it to do the following. Right, smoke buster package. Smoke belching uh, is something that you know we all find pretty horrendous here in, in the uh, traffic, all right? Um, you're going to cover that in some detail today, or, or are we, are we going, going to, not, not going to that package yet? Okay. But suffice to say, we've got answers already prepared for that. Uh, Anti-rust spray, well, we looked earlier, when we were looking at the different things an oil additive does, it's, it's anti-corrosion. So, again, the DMX technology lends itself to making sprays that are very good for anti-corrosion. Gun cleaner, similar sort of thing. What's good for an engine is good for a gun. Okay? Alkaline booster. Right, marine and diesel oil, power plant fuels. Okay. Um, for various reasons, we're, with marine diesel oil and power plant fuels, it's a great advantage to us if we can boost their alkalinity because again we get similar problems with acid. All right. Um, this is more edging towards the industrial side of the business. So not necessarily what you're meant to be involved with initially, but the point being this one DMX technology is doing all these things. Fuel conditioner. Now this is important. This is something that you are going to be actively involved with. The same technology we can put into the fuel as well as into the engine oil. And what it will do is dramatically improve things from the other end of the engine. In other words, the actual burning inside the engine of the fuel. All right. Um, I've got a few diagrams that uh, I'll get up to in a minute just to discuss the fuel conditioner a little bit more. Fuel lubricity improver. What's all that about? Well, uh, without wanting to get too deep again into the technology, environmental legislation has meant that fuel has changed quite a lot since the 1990s to where we are now in 2015. And the way it's changed is, one of the most dramatic things is, fuel, when it comes from a refinery, can often be contaminated with stuff called sulfur. And sulfur, when we let it come through and burn inside an engine, comes out of your exhaust as stuff called sulfur oxides. And well, what's the problem with that? Well, the problem with the sulfur oxide is if you kept it just mixed with a little bit of moisture that's in the atmosphere, it makes sulfuric acid. So we're all breathing in the results of this, which is sulfuric acid, which is not good. The trees don't like it either. It's the biggest killer of trees, and uh, I would say probably on the planet, it is uh, acid rain. I don't know if you've ever heard of the term acid rain, but this is the reason why we have a lot of pressure to take out sulfur from fuel. Also, perhaps um, the uh, older people here can remember, uh, we used to have leaded gasoline. Uh, if you remember, they used to put lead in gasoline. Uh, obviously, that's a, a major source of, po of, of poisoning for people through breathing it in through their lungs. That got taken out. Well, where are we going with this? Well, the point being that the sulfur and the lead that we now removed for good environmental reasons actually made the gasoline and the diesel a better lubricant inside the engine. Well, why do we need that? Uh, you've got oil for your lubrication. Well, 
in the diesel engine, you've got very, very precision made in injectors to inject the fuel in, and the lubricant was pretty essential for those. It also helped the valves inside the engine to last, even in a gasoline engine. So the lubricant was pretty essential. It got taken away, and the result is we've got fuels now with relatively poor ability to lubricate. But what we do is the DMX technology in our fuel conditioner puts that back. So what's it all about from the customer's point of view? It means that he's going to save an awful lot of wear. And if you save wear, then you get an engine that runs better, less black smoke, less pollution, better miles, uh, you know, better fuel consumption. So everyone is happy, right? Yeah. I, I, maybe you can no, no, go ahead. Maybe you can uh, emphasize the fact that actually sulfur is actually a lubricant. Yeah, sorry. You take um, that? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, the sulfur and lead were both lubricants. So they, they were lubricants that just unfortunately were polluting. They're gone now. Well, they're not completely gone, but the, the pressure is on to remove them to very, very low levels. So this is why the DMX fuel conditions are important. Uh, not only uh, because they save your customer money, because they make uh, the, the vehicle run better, produce less smoke, use less fuel, but also it will last better and have better emissions. Okay, right. Again, can we play from this? Okay, well, what are we gonna be seeing when, when the sound comes up? This is the demonstration uh, on one of the UTGs of the DMX technology actually in operation. I'm here now at the UV campus to witness a jeep that is guilty for smoke belching and to prove how effective this CP diesel can be. The jeep driver starts this engine and we will see how bad the smoke of this jeep can be. Okay. Excuse that. that. This was uh, really being uh, recorded just for sort of experimental purposes and wasn't a very professional production. Uh, I think you get the idea that there was lots of smoke coming out of that vehicle. It, it, it was a practice run. It was, it was just, it was the first time, but we thought we should just go, go ahead with it. Okay. And this is... Now, now we get the after we have put the DMX technology in the vehicle. In fairness, we did both the engine oil and the fuel. 
you can make the disclosure afterwards. What you react to the video. So we just finished test driving this jeepney for four times here in the UP campus. So we are back here to interview the driver to see what happens and how everything differs after we put the city diesel here in his jeepney. So come on. Boom. So, ilan kayo po pa may ari ng jeep na po? Ah, hindi po. Driver lang po ako. So, ilan taon nyo na po siya din na drive? Ah, uh, dalawa. Two years. So, sa so pagda-drive nyo po nito for the past two years, ano po yung napapansin nyo po? Parang ano po yung experience nyo? Uh, okay naman. Kaso lang, mausok nga. Mausok po. And tapos pero sabi nyo po, mausok. So, ngayon po na nilagay po natin yung city diesel. Ano po yung napansin nyo yung pagkakaiba? Nawala yung itim na usok, tapos nawala yung vibrate ng makina. Nawala yung itim na usok, tapos nawala po yung... Vibrate. Yung nagbabibrate. So kan kung kanina po malakas yung vibration, ngayon po, smooth na siya. Ah, okay po. Tapos, ano pa pong napansin nyo? Kung sasa? Eh, yun lang. So sabi nyo po, medyo nag-smoothen po yung vibration po ng jeep. So paano nyo po nasabing nawala na yung vibration? Na yun? Kasi pagka nakahinto yan, yung... Ambi niya, wala nang ganoon. Eh gaya kanina nung nilagay na nila yung vehicle ta kay yung mechanical na lang eh. Nawala na yung galaw ng cambio pag naka-neutral, pag naka-ito. So mas madali na po siyang gamitin niyo. Okay. 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 Um specifically those were parts what we, what we were really showing you there was our smoke cluster package. All right which was a complete package um, and it, we will be covering this with you at some stage but not perhaps uh, for this initial introduction and it may not be the first area in which you're going to be involved in, in sales and operations okay? but I mean it just shows you the effectiveness uh, what that was, the smoke buster package consists of, we produced, I think it was 20 litres was it? 20 litre drum of fuel. Did we? Pair. Okay. And uh, did we drain? I can't remember if we drained. Okay. 